Right, uh, Neil is here from the band. Thanks for joining us today, man. My pleasure. So, busy, man. It's been a busy. Tell us about your, I guess, your last few years have been kind of crazy. Yeah, well, this, this tour in particular for Support and Pure Rock Fury, we've been out for 13 months. Um, out of that 13 months, we've been home for about maybe four weeks. So we're starting to get some kind of long-term fatigue. And uh, not to say that we don't enjoy what we do, but uh, we need to go home and kind of re-energize ourselves. <laughs> What the next manifestation will be, I don't know. It's kind of whatever, you know, whatever the spirit moves us to do. And uh, I think that the stuff that the new stuff we're writing is kind of, I think, much more blues influenced. And um, yeah, kind of not, maybe not as complicated as some of the stuff we've done in the past. <laughs> Carry on with Loud. Hello. The members join us now. Hello. JP here. Well, JP's up. I'm loving the way metal is getting represented in the media. It's, it's awesome. If you're playing heavy music these days, you only fit into one category or you won't even be talked about. You know, it's, I mean, you guys have been doing it for enough years with your own sound that that's got to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, for us, I think it, it presents some difficulty with record labels if they, they listen to the music and it does, they can't immediately draw um, similarities with other bands. Um, and that makes their life easier just from a business perspective, but when it's something that's a little more bizarre, um, it means more work. And, uh, you know, when people say, well, they kind of, you know, sound like Frank Zappa, that's not going to do them any good because kids don't <laughs> buy Zappa records these days. Doing a radio show playing metal, it was awesome because all the Clutch fans would come up to me and say, they will f***ing kill me if I start playing your band on the radio. Every time we played your band, they're like, don't play Clutch. Don't let anybody find out about them. It was really <laughs> protective. We played them anyway. But it was a very protective fan base. Uh, that's the way the fans have been, you know. We've uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to tour for 10 years now. Uh, the people who saw us eight years ago still continue to come see the show. Um, Clutch fans are are very, very diehard. And, and they are very protective of the band, so that's not surprising to me. Is that a cool thing for you, or do you find it might be limiting? It's a mixed blessing. I mean, it's very flattering that people are that passionate about the band. Um, and I find that people either love us or hate us at the, from the get-go. And, um, it, you know, I, I want as many people as possible to hear my music. That's all I ask for. Um, but, I can, you know, I remember at a certain age, you know, there were certain bands, you, you feel it's almost like being part of a special club, and you don't want that club to be public. Um, so I can understand both sides of the coin. Talk about metal today and hard music today and punk and all the stuff that, that, that's out there. Honestly, um, I don't really listen to too much of it because I'm around it so much. It's like the last thing I want to listen to. Um, I think quote unquote heavy music has very much become a parody of itself. Um, there's so many, you know, bands riding on other bands' coattails, you know, it's just circular and it doesn't advance anywhere. I think heavy music was in a better state in the mid 80s than it, you know, is now. Um, I think it's kind of creatively become very stale. Uh, but there's always bands out there that um, the ones the public really doesn't hear about that are doing something much more um, interesting. I think the important thing to remember is that uh, the people who actually buy the records are not ignorant or, or stupid people. You, you have to look at the record companies that are, um, that are putting out this same sort of derivative crap, you know? Uh, that's what the kids are offered, that's what they know. I, when I was growing up, I would go to the record store and I would seek out the good records and I would study and I would learn and I would talk to friends and like, what's the record to get and the other. But see, that doesn't really happen so much with most kids who buy records. They watch the MTV, you know, and they listen to the radio and they say, all right, well, that's that's the new band to get into and go get that record. It's just that they don't, they're not aware of, of the good music that's out there. <laughs> Are you 
guys easily frustrated? These are the kind of guys that are easily, um, you know, just caught up in what's going on and want to change it all the time? We, we pay no attention to what's going on at all. <laughs> <laughs> Been lost for years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even musically, you say to yourself, I want to be able to do this, and maybe, you know, there isn't enough room for this, or maybe this band can't do this. Oh, well, I mean, it's like, of course, I'd always, you know, I'd like to learn how to play the cello or something like that, but, um, you know, go for have a long life ahead of me, and everyone else does, too. We're going to keep learning new stuff and bringing those elements to our music. Um, one thing that, you know, I have a great fear of is kind of redundancy. You know, some bands, you, you can be redundant, that's their whole thing, and they're great at it. It's the Ramones, they, you know, it's the Ramones all the time, and it was brilliant. But that's not us. We, we kind of have to, we have to keep learning and keep expressing ourselves in new ways. Go back to what we were talking about before dealing with lowest common denominator, because the special we're working on for metal. Now, I'm just trying to get a handle on what it is, and it's so popular. Did it ever go away? That's the big line. No, it just it slipped the attention of, you know, popular culture. And it'll go away again into popular culture, and it'll be an underground phenomenon, and then it'll resurge as a different, you know, beast. The bands out there that are getting tons of exposure um, that you just, just ride you every time you hear them in the worst possible way and you can't believe they're the ones that get the attention I, I don't by this by this point it's sort of uh it just goes over my head i don't even pay attention to it anymore uh most of the music on the radio today i uh, i can't even really relate to it's got nothing to do with the way we make music or the way we play I, I'm, I'm the same way i mean i think you know years ago when i, I think i had a much more co competitive mindset um, I paid attention to that stuff, but you know, I'm happy with what I have and I don't you know I'm already satisfied. Of course. I always want some more, but I can't be bothered with you know the Joneses At the same time when you're when you're in um, a field and you love music you want good music to be heard yeah. Not just by your own, by your own music, but by other people, right? I mean, you keep a, you got to keep a wide perspective, because you were just talking about heavy rock, and then you got to include rock, and then th there's... It's easy when you're so wrapped up and think it's the center of the universe, and it's not. It's just a small minority of it, and uh, there's a lot of other scenes going on there, and uh, whether it be blues, jazz, country, electronic, hip-hop, you know, we... You know, I try to keep those things in mind as well. You know, not not obsess about rock and roll. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Sure. More clutch on loud.